Now that we've taken a look at the basics of the matrices, we'll go ahead and take a look at some built-in functions. First thing we'll look at is making a series using the sum function. First, we'll need to define an equation, then the sum function can give us the sum of the function to a number of terms of our choosing. So let's start by defining a n as 1 over n factorial minus 1. Now the basic syntax for the sum function is the sum square bracket your expression your variable min and max. If we wanted to find say 20 terms we could use the sum function as follows. The sum of a n where n goes from 1 to 20. Shift enter and we see that Mathematica gives us this big fraction. By default Mathematica will output fractions in their simplified form. If we wanted a decimal form of this answer then we could go ahead and use the numeric function, which is just a capital N and a square bracket over our expression. If we press shift enter, we get approximately negative 18.3. Now we can play around with the numeric function as well to change the precision of our answer. So by default, it'll give us about 8 bits, which on average is around 8 significant figures. If you wanted this to say 16 bits of precision, you could go up, put a comma after expression, it's 16, shift enter again. Now we have much higher precision. Now if you wanted to find a sum to infinity, Let's just go ahead and put the numeric function right away. It'd be the sum of a n, where n goes from 1 and now to infinity. Shift enter. And as we can see, this sum does not converge. Now we can take a look at tables and list plotting. The table function is a nice way to organize expressions by simultaneously evaluating them and putting them into a vector. To illustrate this, we'll look at a simple example, then use the sum function and the expression a n we defined earlier. The basic syntax for the table function is table square bracket the expression, your variable once again, min and max. Now a simple use for the table function is making a small multiplication table. So we can go ahead and say s is equal to table of i times j, i goes from 1 to 3, and j goes from 1 to 4. Here, we have i multiplied by j. Since we have two increments defined, the first one, i, will determine the number of rows while j determines our columns. So what we would expect is a 3 by 4 multiplication table. To make it easier to look at, let's go ahead and put it in matrix form. Now shift enter. We can see that as expected we got a 3 by 4 multiplication table. 
Now, if we wanted to see a list of the sum of a n as the number of terms increases, we could also use the table function. Since we found the sum of 20 terms of a n, let's go ahead and list them. So table, the sum of a n as n goes from 1 to i. Let's go ahead and put the numeric function around a n so that we don't get any fractions. And now let's get i from 1 to 20. We'll go ahead and suppress the table and put it in matrix form so that we can view the list a little bit easier. So as you can see, we have each of our terms, and as the number of terms of an increases, we see that our number gets a big, bigger and bigger and does not converge. A nicer way that we can display the information is by including our term number. To do this, we can make each expression in our table a vector that includes i and the sum that we're evaluating. Now if we press shift enter, we see that we get the term numbers along with the sums. This form of the matrix is very useful for us because now we can use a list plot to graph each term. Now list plots input a matrix of x's and y's. Now because we have our matrix in this form, with our term numbers and our expressions, we can plug that straight into the list plot. Shift enter, and now we have a plot of our points. We can use various functions within list plot to connect the points and label our graph. So if we wanted to join the points, we would use joined, an arrow called a rule, and then true. And if we wanted to label our axes, we could use the axis label function, another arrow, and terms, and the sum. Oops, I accidentally pressed enter. Now we can also set our axis origin using the axis origin function, another rule, and 0, 0. And finally, we can label our plot. Now shift enter, and we have our graph nice and labeled. Now let's take a look at taking derivatives. Just like we did with the sum function, let's define an expression that we want to take the derivative of. We can take the derivative using the derivative function of Mathematica. 
the syntax of the, the derivative function is d the expression the variable and the order of your derivative So let's start with our expression. We'll set y equal to the cos of pi times x over 6. And take the first derivative. dy is equal to the derivative of y. And if it's just the first order derivative, we don't need to bother with the curly brackets. We just need a variable. And our second derivative d2y is equal to d of y and x second order shift enter and now we have a list of our derivatives along with our expression so in this part of the tutorial we took a look at derivatives using the list plot function using the sum function and using the table function in the next part of the tutorial we'll take a look at how we can plot these three functions on the same x and y axes.